Travis is his name. Okay, so it's fucking New Year now at exactly 12 o'clock. Do you have a vacuum cleaner? On uh, January 1st, I guess that would be the date, right? Give me the... Give you the what? It's over there, buddy. I'm not gonna hand it to you. Anyways, happy fucking New Year, everybody. If this was fucking... And, uh... It's 2004. Another hassle I have to put up with because I don't like even numbers. <laughs> and this one's the ultimate even number. So uh, I have to wait till next year, 2005. And have a good night. Lab it up, motherfucker! This is the first Tontomancy cassette recorded here in the dimming room in Cascadia. This series is purely made through the magnetic and somatic construction of cassettes, recording, and analog construction. There will only be a linear hauler through this living cut-up of sound magic, featuring vulnerable and honest vexations, transdimensional visitations, live and unheard demos as well as creative confluences with other artists personal hauntological artifacts of the self specter and hell candid conversations and more i mean to enamor myself within the processes long made archaic due to digital ease and the sameness of current modern digital production. This temporary biological detritus of a flesh suit must commune with the dirt and cherish the rust. Damn it, with the advent of AI's exorcisms of deeply artistic processes of creation and of courting, I aim to hauntologically consort with the ghosts of the bygone, almost was, and probably will be. I have to put up with
Where are the misses? The gaps? The beautiful mistakes? Let's exalt the human error of modernity so fervently. Fervently. <laughs> Let's exalt the human error modernity so fervently wishes to rid of. The humanity built within the dharmic basra of the artistic medium. Invigorate the somatic atmospheres within personal bouts, missives that make life so wonderfully bittersweet. As 2023 draws to a close, I'm saddled with my own divergent and anarchic magics. The audiomancy I have created this year has mutated, has changed. Deep musings linger still, and I wish to consort them all in 2024. Saunter through the rugged concrete terrain of commercial holiday haves, gallivanting over the horror day have nots here in Seattle. I am bitten by a stark revelation. A revelation brought on by the decrepit creep of unearthed cassette recordings of my young self. Through 2023's audiomancy work, it has come to this final abide. The realization that I hated this young self specter this Travis. Even when I was out Travis. My childhood ghost is now illustrated through magnetic catalogs. And they reveal, well, I know it all. A dangered, riddled, and petulant child. <sighs> a petulant child who took his abandonment issues out on the souls he came across and haunted the cities he traveled through. I feel so detached from him. But I hated even more that the lore I built around this poison subjectivity was sustained in an unwillingness to bask into those traumas. And 
started unearthing these cassette recordings, well, that can only dispel them. The cassette has become a Bajra, a dharmic talisman that pierces the veil of the subjective and documents the atmosphere of that. I am not that the angry kid whose heart is still a fist needs to embark on. I hope to forgive him. I know I'm learning to. But through this concrete jungle, I am often realizing I am saddled with other inherent and absolute mediations on a life lived on things lost. I've been having these very synchronistic, almost premonition heavy, but I can only describe it in metaphor and in poetry, but um, for the past few weeks, really since we've been on the trip, I have been wrestling with like a deep faith in what I otherwise considered unknowable or immovable and deep bouts and and like heavy kind of coronations when it comes to uh, you know faith and uh, uh, religiosity piousness piety I should say not that I would ever be denominational um, to any faith it can be debilitating because you're trying to you know, keep afloat of your day and what you're doing, who you are, you know, sustain things, uh, be accountable. And then I'm, I lose myself. I'm completely transparent in a way. I like disappear into this kind of knowingness or like this vacuum of like understanding kind of the weight of the, like the valuation that we put on, on silly things or even things that we hold dear just like the temporary kind of construct of it and how magnanimous it should be because it's fleeting I've, I've had these visions of like you know shards and you know grains of sand being basically on a beach being like the kind of collective parcels of uh, you know echoing thunder strikes, right, of thought and synapses. Really, they're just particles that mix in with other things, and that's what art is, and just shards that kind of feed and seed um, into other people. And we the whole, we say haunt on, I guess I just never really, really thought that that would become so apparent to me and such larger constructs to haunt on. Uh, because, you know, us as a beingness, this temporary, vessel or whatever you want to call it like it really does continue on it does exist and these shards of echoes and resonance of actions of you know being read about like freddy krueger you know you gotta think of them for him to exist and in a way that's how we exist for good or for ill trapped or not uh, trapped in the devices of our actions of how we've 
resonated against people. But after this temporary kind of construct of self that we have, you know, we explode into a million parts and different pieces just scattered, you know, everywhere, throughout everything. And we bounce back like synapses in a brain. <laughs> They say it's wrong to get your hopes up, but I'm going to stretch out tight sinews that cling to stale bones. Maybe then the marrow might infuse something brittle with new blood. Keep texting me. Each ding jiggles a clog in the bones. Tug me into memory of hazy haunts before the Pleistocene. So what if it is getting up my hopes to go into briars, clippers in hand? Would be nice to clear this away, the only terrain. Lay a new bed. It's okay no matter what. The thicket needed tending anyway. During the second initiatory spirit box session for listening post alpha on April 8th, 2023, which the full videos and reports are available to patrons, I proceeded to have one of the most unflinching paranormal communions ever. And the being I was conversing with told me its name was Little Wind. Where do I begin? Do you have a name? Do you, do you know who I am? Oh. 
did you enjoy when I played you music? Soup. Soup? <laughs> what is your name? Little Wind. Can I call you Little Wind? Little Wind since has become a personal vector, an avatar of pure creation and the archetype for creative abandon and generative artistry that I have consorted with since. I would find out retrocausally, of course, that the confluence of Little Wind and my southwestern beginnings were a lore long storied, especially within the faith of the Navajo peoples. According to Navajo belief, Little Wind people are seen as benevolent deities and offer advice to people in danger. Wind puts himself in the folds of the ears and whatever it speaks for advice is true. This ties the individual strongly to the natural world with the notion that a person's thoughts and actions do not belong exclusively to the individual but also to the whole year. them within the preamble of the Zolder Echo Resonar, a chapter of Hame. This may be was a personal archetype that embodied the other, but really encapsulates the lore of the Americana sheet ghost, the elusive Egyptian being Medjed, and the trickster archetype of the Koyote, or Mai and Navajo. As a vehicle this Mayabing became an archetype for my own bardo jumping. And now this maybe, maybe, has revealed itself in this very bardo, in this dimmy. Naturally, one of its many names now is Little Wind. As they, the Little Winds, are the keepers of the liminal and the preternatural such as all creative acts. I now exalt Little Wind before every creative endeavor, especially that relating to Audiomancy or any other tether to dim Zimzum, to dim the contraction to the Ein Sof, to make the unfathomable a little more fathomable. He also speaks through me, gibberish, glossolalia, angel speak, whatever you want to call it, but it's become a tool for my audio Nancy to speak with the voice, the wind of the voice, and the little gusts that come from the sternum out. Here is an improvised, made up on the spot hymn to Little Wind.
What of 2024? What of all that came before and what comes after now? Well, I can say that I'm excited at the Prospector. This working has bridged the Aspector, the Specter, all of the shit that came from 2023. This Hauntomancy, this Sentimancy, Nostalgiamancy, Chronomancy, any kind of Mancy that was parlayed and pushed through. 
transdimensionally wayfare to the goof juice in 2023 and to exalt Revel Raj, my magical moniker now rebirthed to commune with Travis, the scared little shit that he was, and to bridge the community of We the Hallowed, of Pragmagic, of it all with a schema. And the schema, well, it's called the Divergent Magic and Archicon I've worked for months in silence, constructing something that I thought could be transposed, breaking down ritual creation and ritual degradation into a guide, a workbook, a schema, and self-published it. It's now available for Amazon. You can pick up one of the very first pressings. Of course, this schema, this workbook will be updated. And the right cycles within it, it can be used for anything from health habits to song creation to artistic projects to magic. All of it. I use it every day. It comes from my neurodivergent mind. And now it'll have a vessel to organize and the chaotic and anarchic magics of my life. And maybe it'll help you with yours too. But I will allow a past liminal stream, Keats, to talk more candidly about it. about to share with you because um, I have been working so hard on it the past few months quietly and released it quietly and I'm waiting to have uh, it in my hands to share and promote. Um, And that is the thing that I was talking about, about, I think I figured out a workbook and a schema to help bridge, you know, not only uh, We the Hollowed and Prag Magic, my own rituals, my own art- artistry, but maybe other people could find use in this too. Um, here, I'll just share you, because it, it is published. So, I published this earlier this month, and I've been waiting to share it, because I have not received my copies yet to inscribe and to send to patrons and friends Um, but you can find it now and you can order it uh, with the caveat that if there's any printing changes that need to be made I won't know until I get mine shipped because it's matter uh, no matter how hard I try to get this done with weeks in advance of the holiday bullshit, the holiday bullshit really uh, screwed stuff up, and so I won't be getting my copies uh, until probably like the first couple days of the new year. So, I have created, and hopefully you can still hear me, this is the Divergent Magic Anarchic Grimoire, and This grimoire is a workbook, as I say, it's a schema to create and conjure your own anarchic rituals. Uh, So it's a hardback book, it's 223 pages, because of course it is. Um, And every book has write cycles in it that are basically organized pages and schema for you to create. reinvigorate and dissect and, you know, uh, demolish your own rituals, whether they be, you know, health habits or magnanimous magical uh, communions with the other, or, you know, a lot of my cases, uh, artistic rituals. And so, 
This is on Amazon right now. I'm not going to share it in the chat. So because of those of you that really want it, you can find it on Amazon. Um, I am holding off on making a huge announcement and really, you know, spreading the news about this work that I've worked really hard on designing. And I'll show you some pages of it of why it's not just a blank journal like my other Prag Magic book was. Um, yeah, I've worked really hard on it. I want to wait until I get it in my hands, I can showcase and, uh, you know, really, really share in the wealth of it. So around my studio here, around the dimming room, let me find some blank ones so I don't give anything away. hardback journals. I also uh, published a, a paperback, which is a little cheaper. Personally, I created these for me, um, and it works within kind of a neurodivergent avenue of how I compartmentalize and conceptualize a ritual, uh, be that something pragmatic or be that something creative or magical. This is the schema I use for myself to create and kind of ordain the space to, to create these rituals and to deconstruct them. Um, so every, these are just full page printouts, but every workbook has these. And there's about 47 cycles where you can list your rituals, your intentions, the specters, or the, even the living people, or whoever you're communing with, with each ritual, a place for sigils. Don't pay attention to this. This is an off print. Uh, it looks a lot nicer in the book. I know that for sure. Um, on the back of each, you have your declarations, your observations, a place to remark about it when year later or one month later uh, a place for notes uh, at the very end of each cycle and my own personal schema which is the dissolver echo resonar uh, schema that I use to struggle bus uh, magical or creative uh, prospects um, so it's dissolver echo resonar and that means basically you take a subject, in this case a ritual or a habit or something that's just not kind of gelling or you're finding different things or need to see differently about and you meditate on what needs to dissolve about it, what needs to echo or to animate about it and what the intention is that's going to resonate um, afterwards, uh, long after you're gone, that lingers still. So. These are just shitty pages that I personally use uh, because I've been using them to construct uh, the new Rebel Raws record. And the audio sigil, or sorry, the video sigil of the Audiomancy, which I guess is an audio sigil too, that all was worked out uh, with these. Um, just to give you an example, here's a song. Song as a ritual. So this is a pretty standard song. Father Karis that I filled out and you know sigilized and, and did everything with so I'm doing that for something as crafting as a, as a sigil I'm doing it for something as pragmatic as a stretching routine um, I'm doing it uh, something magnanimous as like a you know a Santa, Santissimo Muerte Novena that I'm not understanding or, or feeling I need to kind of uh, incept I don't even know if that's a verb like that but uh, yeah uh, that I need to customize you know for my mind to be able to understand and to work with these things you know I um, when learning a new uh, like I'll say for example like some holy guardian angel kind of elements I'm not saying 
I mean, you could use this for the Abermelon <laughs> ritual. That would really dumb it down um, pretty fascinatingly, probably. Actually, I might do that just to kind of fuck with folks who are snooty about that stuff. But, um, yeah, I designed a book. Jenny Rocky for her beautiful poem and more. Welcome to 2024, the year of neither, either, or.
clothing boutique in the heart of the rain on the way to the donut shop with Erica. We'd been listening to the Smiths after school on my parents' bed. We let our heads drop back just beyond the edge and said, let's go get some donuts. We forgot to bring our umbrellas and got soaking wet on the walk, but a cup of coffee and a styrofoam cup with the donuts warmed us up. Then we went up the block and came across this hole in the wall with a Marlene Dietrichy dame sitting behind a display case of dusty vials full of old lady eau de toilette. You'll only once discover this particular store if you go without umbrellas to get donuts in a Diamond District downpour, singing How Soon Is Now with Erica. Midlife, mid-level, mid-suburban, con- 
just a flexion will come at me I know heaven's just a 26 dollar a pub A part of this revelry again And if I'm ever alone I can just skyrocket to heaven to do is busk for $26 and hit that fence.